I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Nicaragua. Today I want to talk about the risks and dangers of being a driver here in Nicaragua and why you may want to reconsider taking the time to drive. Of course, if you're going to live here full time, you'll probably want to drive eventually, but not all of you. But for many people, if you're visiting, there are good reasons why you may not want to drive, but we also need to preface it with some, or, or we need to give it to contextualize it with some reality instead of just the fear mongering that you're very likely to get, because that's a super popular thing whenever you have gringo enclaves so we're gonna dive into that when we and about the whole fear-mongering culture that exists in the enclaves so let's get to that right after that bump I'm out standing in the rain doing today's video because it's raining all day and I don't have a chance to record and it's very easy to fall behind if I don't get right on it. So I'm recording in the rain and it's actually lovely. It's a very light rain. When we get heavy rains, there's no way for me to record when it's late like this. It's fantastic. So there's a lot of reasons why you may want to consider not driving in Nicaragua. For one, navigation is very tough, depending on what you're going to be doing. If you're here on vacation, I really suggest thinking twice about it. There's very little that you're going to benefit from being your own driver, and it's really easy to work around that. And I don't mean you have to go with public transportation. There's private shuttles to go around the country. Taxis are surprisingly affordable, even for really long distances, at least when you compare it to the cost of renting a car. And renting a driver or hiring a driver who comes with their own car uh, is incredibly affordable and sometimes cheaper than just renting the car on its own on a per day basis. So you may be able to get more for your money simply by not renting a car. Some people really like to drive and there are times that driving does give you something that something else does not. I don't want to downplay the entire possibility of driving. It's not 100% don't do it, but whatever you're thinking, it's less likely to be desirable than you're imagining. As someone who lives here, yes, most of us drive, but if you live here full time, still many of us don't, but we think twice about it. So some of the reasons why you may not want to drive that are very realistic. One is navigation. It is extremely difficult to navigate Nicaragua. Things like Google Maps and Apple Maps are not super accurate. Traffic information is not accurate. Signals are not always clear. A lot of times there's red lights that you're supposed to go through and a lot of times there's police waving you places but you can barely see them. Traffic can be crazy. And navigating with all of that can be quite difficult, especially as Google Maps will routinely take you the wrong way on one way roads or block you from going to parts of the city. Then you realize that they have the roads wrong and, and there is a way through or whatever. I've had entire bridges that I went to cross and turned out there had never been a bridge there, no remnants of it. I talked to people, they're like, no, there's never been a bridge here. And these things were on the map as main thoroughfares through a city. So you do want to be pretty careful with those things. Not that you can't work around it, not that they never make mistakes in other places, but the rate at which that it's a problem here is quite high. And if you're navigating a tight city, Leon, Granada, Managua, Matagalpa, it can be really tough to drive and navigate. Now, if you have a navigator who's very comfortable reading the map, knows what's going on, is okay working with some things and dealing with the surprises of Nicaragua, you can get through some of that, but it's still going to be tougher than if you just have a driver who can roll down the window and ask people for directions, knows most of the places and so forth. Nicaragua is not a huge place, so people tend to know their way around if they've lived here to some degree. The second thing is the actual driving itself. This is generally harder than North America, but it's not as hard as driving in a lot of European countries. It's not as hard as driving in Africa or Asia, for example. So this could be a thing, but it probably is not. But if you're on vacation, why spend the time doing a little bit more difficult driving? If you're gonna be living here for a while, not probably a big deal. And if you live here full time, yeah, you'll get used to the differences and that's not a big deal at all for most people. But be aware that driving here does tend to be slow, frustrating, and my dogs are having a great time. If you are going to be someone who is easily frustrated by having horses in the road, cows in the road, people on bicycles, bicycle tricycles with people on them moving super slowly, if you have any issues with patience or you're just an angry driver, this is not the place for you. This is not a place for that. You need extreme patience. You need to be able to get into traffic and be like, ah, I'm waiting for people who are walking across the road or a horse that stopped in the road or a car that's parked sideways. And we're just going to be three minutes. And we're just going to sit here and not move. We're not going to be angry. If you start getting that bile and you're just angry at the world about your driving taking a while, this is not a place for you to be driving or to be a passenger in many cases. So it's just that you have to be patient. Things take a while. We don't move fast. It's part of the system. It's built into everyone's planning. If you're getting upset by that, you're simply not understanding how the roads are supposed to move. You need to internalize. This is the speed they move at. It is what it is. And you've always got dogs in the road and stuff. And so you got to be really, really vigilant. So many animals, little ones that you could hurt, big ones that could hurt you, 
people, children, people routinely, like anywhere you have to watch out for people walking into the road, but here routinely people will walk in front of you and never once look at you. They will turn their head and look exactly this way you're looking. So if you were to not pay attention, you would just plow into them from behind. They would never see you coming and you'd have the back of their head bouncing off your windshield. That is not a once in a while thing. That is a daily occurrence if you're gonna drive any amount in the country. So you gotta be prepared for those things and comfortable with that being the situation. You are protecting yourself animals and people at all moments and there's a lot going on in most parts of the country so you got to really be vigilant because there's always going to be someone getting in front of you or something getting in front of you often multiple things at the same time it is very difficult and if you have any patience issues your your desire to simply pass people when maybe there's someone in that other lane could easily take over it's just it's a bad scene you need a lot of patience to be safe in this country so you add those things together and it does make driving a little bit tougher i don't mean to make it sound insurmountable. It is not. It is absolutely okay. But it is a country where patience is going to reward you a lot when driving. Okay, Scott, boring. You've talked about this enough. Wouldn't it be a lot more interesting if we maybe, you know, showed people some of the driving in Nicaragua so they understand what it's like? In fact, it's raining today. Why don't you jump out and go for a drive and show people what it's like? Maybe go from, like someone asked on the show, go from uh, uh, Veracruz out to La Colonia and show them how it is getting from the Reparto to the local grocery store. Wouldn't that be a lot more interesting? Get to it. This is my reaction video to me driving through Sutiava today. Okay, that was the airport road that is 6th Street coming west. This is the Ponaloya Road coming into Sutiava. You see bicyclists in the rain, uh, people out by the stop, even in a pretty heavy rain. This is the same day that it's flooding in Managua. You'll notice that there is just a lot of people out on the street all the time. There's always something going on. There's a bit of traffic. We see all these people. That kid fell off the sidewalk while I was coming up there. Like, you have to pay attention. People will be walking along, just fall into the street. It's a bit of a mess. Now, luckily, the rain was pretty light at this point, so we're able to see and uh, we're not having problems with these streets flooding. We'll see some water in the street as we go, but it's not going to be too crazy. Managua is actually, like, completely inundated while this is going on, uh, but, but we did pretty well here in Leon. It really wasn't that bad, but this is going to give you, like, seriously, a good idea of what driving is like nearly all the time. This is a very normal. So this is a Friday morning, like 10.30-ish, uh, and it'll give you a feeling of, of how much traffic there is and what kind of traffic there is. You'll notice I am constantly having to pass slow-moving, poorly lit people, vehicles. That guy just pulled a U-turn in the middle of the road, um, like right in front of me. There's so many just different things going on all the time. Now, this was a surprise. This is actually a church. And if you look as we go by on the right, this church just put in a new awning. This was uh, welded on this week. But all of these cars on a uh, Friday morning for church, like the, this is quite extensive. I was not expecting this at all. We do often get church traffic down here, but this is pretty extreme. That blue building on the right is the church, and that's the new awning that they just put on. As far as I can tell, this was like the church service to celebrate the new awning. Like, it's pretty pretty funny in uh, in when you think of it that way, that still all this traffic is just for the church, or all this parking, I should say, uh, is for the church. But again, this makes it really hard to drive. Um, like it gets a lot more complicated. This is the the neighborhood of San Mateo. This is the Colegio Calesans on the left. That's a major uh, landmark. And here we're going into kind of a boulevard. The road splits, and that means we're coming into the Marquetito. This is Marquetito. This is um, the the central hub of Sutiava. Uh, this is what's going to be moving. If you saw my video about the new market down by the airport, this is what's moving there. Always a few buses here. Always a guy on bicycle. You see, he moved over for me. You're always like watching because half the time they'll just come right over and run into you. You gotta be super careful. Doors open on you. Animals will step, people will step out of that center area. So you really gotta be watching for dogs, cats, children. Children will step right in front of you, right here out of those bushes without even looking. It's crazy. You see people with umbrellas, they're in the road, right? Are they looking? No, they're walking with traffic, not paying attention at all. So there you've got um, dollies in the street. Like I'm barely dodging these things in a lot of cases. Like they're pretty close. There's the bus on the left that heads, the chicken bus that heads out to Las Benitas and Ponaloya. Now this is Marcadito. And notice how tight this is. I've got the tricycles on the left. I've got the line of them on the right, ready to go. 
see the cars squeezing through and traffic has stopped because people can't get through. There's a tricyclo in the way. There's someone getting into the car. Those people selling fruit, like they're just off the mirror. That, that car on the left is trying to squeeze by with the mirror. I can't get through because this tricyclo is in the way. Uh, these motorcycles will come through anyway. So it's just, this is mayhem. This is not a side road. This is really important. This is Ruben Dario. This is the main street coming through. Notice the guy on the right is yelling over the speaker. He's like DJing like he's on the radio, but he's just got a big speaker there. Uh, here on the right, the naked guy, Sutiava, made an appearance. So we had to make a disappearance for him because obviously we can't be showing that on the show. You can see his feet there if you really want to see him walking around. But yes, completely naked guy walking around on the side of the road. People ask about him on the show all the time. He's doing okay. He was out enjoying the rain uh, as he often does. That is a mental hospital there on the right, uh, and we're going to be just behind it is the Iglesia Sutiava, which is basically a cathedral. It's not quite, uh, and it's got the big square of Sutiava. And you can see both sides, we're waiting for people on tricyclos. Traffic just comes to a standstill. You got to be patient, right? There's no way you're going to rush this. They can't go faster. You don't want them to, you know, they have no way to get out of the way, right? The roads are too tight. There's one that's almost going to come in. And uh, uh, it's just, it's really complicated, but they provide an important service. They're really great. It's just, what are you going to do? That is Dr. Coffee right there on the right. That's where we go quite often uh, to get coffees and stuff. Uh, very nice place. And uh, then we get a little bit better. This is like the heart and soul of Sutiava on the main road. The traffic is still pretty heavy. Notice that we're still squeezing by all the cars, but we're able to get by pretty well. The, the Marcadito church area is really, really bad. Uh, but most of Sutiava is normally just, it's a little bit of a challenge. You got speed bumps. Why would I need speed bumps? There's no way to get up to speed here. Like, that's crazy. Just another obstacle to make things tough. And these are always deep speed bumps. Like, you hit them hard, you're going to damage your car. So you got to watch really carefully. Uh, and, and this is just every day, everywhere, right? There's a tricycle about to jump into traffic at any moment. They'll be in the way. Now we're coming into like pharmacy row. And notice there's, there's people just everywhere, right? Vehicles going in every possible direction. So you're never sure what they're going to do, how close they're going to get to you. You have to move slow and you have to be alert at all times. Like super, super alert. Uh, people walking. Notice they'll just walk right next to, they didn't even wait for me. There's like, ah, eh, it won't hit me that hard. <laughs> like that's kind of the, the feeling. Uh, so many people on Bicycles, motorcycles, there's a horse at some point. I think it was in the other direction. I'm not going to show like both directions, like the whole day driving. We'll put them on Drive Warp or put them on the Scott Allen Miller uh, show so you can have some raw stuff there. That guy starts pushing right next to me. So he's right next to the car. And basically, he doesn't hit it, but it gets really close. Here, I've got to get by this bicycle, but it, does he move over? A little bit. In this case, he did. In, in many cases, they don't. And almost always, if you see them move over, it's because I'm honking at them. Right, not because they're actually just getting out of the way. That guy was not going to stop his motorcycle, I don't think. And then you're always worried these guys are going to jump out, so you're watching really carefully. More pharmacies there. This whole stretch, starting with Dr. Coffee all the way down to, that's, uh, I think this in the blue is probably the last one. Just all pharmacies, the whole way. It's really crazy. And then we're coming up to, this is Bam Pro on the right, and the Panaderia Jerusalem is on the corner on the left there, and this is the Semaforo. Semaforo, this is the street light that separates the Barrio Sutiava from the city of Leon proper. So once we get through this traffic, which is pretty often pretty crazy, people will walk by, bicycle by while you're sitting at the light, all kinds of things going on. You're just so much. And uh, once we're through the light, then we'll zip through Leon, and we're going to go to La Colonia. So we're doing the drive from the Reparto Veracruz. That's basically where we started the video. And this was asked on the show, because on the uh, middle class episode, um, we showed Reparto Veracruz, and some people said, well, how far would it be from the Reparto Veracruz to, say, a grocery store? And that's exactly what we're doing in this drive. So I was in front of the Reparto Veracruz. I hit record on the show, and we're heading to La Colonia, the main supermarket. Now, you already saw how fast you got to Marcadito. So if you just wanted a street market, that's how close it is. Like, that's a walk, right? But this is much farther to get to a full-blown traditional supermarket. Again, look at all these people out in the street. There's several vehicles wide, and they're still walking, and there's another speed bump, uh, walking so close to me that I have to be careful not to bump them. Uh, and, and this, again, this is Ruben Dario. This is the main street 
of Leon on the west side of the city. So this is the Ponoloya Road coming straight through the middle of Sutiava, straight through the middle of Leon. This is on the right is Lava Rio, on the left is Saragossa, and we're just about to convert into El Centro in just a block or two, uh, or it's actually about three. So we're not actually going to drive into El Centro, but that's about where we are as uh, we get pretty far through the the nearest barrios, the most downtownish barrios. Look at all that water, potholes hidden everywhere. Um, the potholes come up because of the flooding. So we didn't have very many potholes a few weeks ago. Now with all this rain, we have a lot of potholes. That's unfortunate. When you get the rushing water through the streets, it creates a lot of those problems. So we're going to turn left here because of the one ways. And I'll point out that it's a one way because that's important in just a second. Uh, now, it's weird because all these cars are parked facing towards me, but I'm pretty confident that this is a one-way the other direction. Most of the one-ways are not marked, so you're not always completely sure what the situation is. This one definitely goes north, but this guy's coming towards me, which I don't think he's supposed to be, because uh, you'll notice I have a stop sign, but the other direction does not. That's because it's a one-way. Right, so yeah, people turn around and park the wrong way, that's normal, but like this part of the street, you can't come up to that part of the street in that direction. So we're on a one way going north, uh, and we're gonna take a right on second in just a second. That was first that we just went over. Uh, here we go, second going east, or Arriba, as uh, it's referred. We go towards the rising sun, which is up, and uh, we'll make the turn here. This road is pretty clean, but someone put a raincoat store out in the street. Just block the street. We're just gotta sell raincoats because it's raincoat season. So we're coming pretty close to La Colonia now. Uh, and we're gonna take a right and head down towards first, but not go all the way back down to first. First goes west or abajo back towards uh, Sutiava. So there's another speed bump, and there's going to be another one in front of us. Uh, La Colonia is just up on the right. That is the truck loading for it, and this is the La Colonia parking lot. So if you were coming from the Reparto Veracruz, this is literally where you would drive to. The driving's not completely insane. It's definitely doable, but you can easily see how easy it would be to have an accident, how easy it would be to bump someone, how easy it is to scratch your car, how stressful it can be, and how much it is important to be outrageously patient. If you're not patient, if you're not able to stay alert and, and really see everything going on around you, this is not a good environment for driving. Now, the bigger thing is, of course, there are random police stops all over the country. Some people, this makes uncomfortable. I went through several just yesterday. I drove out to San Juan de Oriente, which we're going to have some cool footage from that coming up soon. I got to edit that, so that might be over the weekend if we're lucky, fingers crossed. But I was driving out there, and I noted that I went through about four or five police stops throughout the day. Now, all but one of those didn't stop me. And one of them had a truck stop. Some of them stopped no one. Some are just observational. But at the very end, as I was coming into Leon, where I live, there was a stop and they pulled me over. And this is super common. You expect to be pulled over on a regular basis. I've gotten lucky. I've got about six months without being pulled over a single time. That's exceptional. Most people are gonna be pulled over more than that. And if you're in a tourist area around Granada, around Rivas, or south of San Juan del Sur, you are expecting to be pulled over constantly because that's where they patrol the most. That's where they have the most traffic issues. That's where they have the most transportation issues. It's also the choke point of the country. So they're, they're going to watch much more closely down there. So I've had people say, oh, I'm in the tourist area. I can't believe I got pulled over. No, no, no. You're in the tourist area. You shouldn't drive if you don't want to be pulled over. But it's not a big deal. Being pulled over is completely normal. They're random stops. They pull over every so many cars. They don't know who's driving. I was pulled over in the middle of the night. Just have your, your paperwork ready your insurance, your registration, and your license. Be ready to hand it to them. Be super polite. They're super polite. It's not a big deal. I have not had an issue in years of being here. It's just a regular part of things. But if you're someone who becomes uncomfortable, that you have to talk to the police, if you're uncomfortable going through random stops, if the idea of just randomly stopping people and making sure that they're being safe and that bad things aren't happening to keep other drivers safe isn't something that you're happy about, then you should reconsider driving. Because if you have a negative attitude when being pulled over by someone who's just doing a random paperwork job, stop, you're going to appear like a gringo, you're gonna appear like you're nervous, and that's gonna cause that incident to potentially escalate. And that is not good for you. But if you're someone who's super calm and it's like, these are just random stops, it doesn't mean anything. It's part of driving. For every so many hours of driving, I expect to be pulled over X number of times. It's just a factor like that. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get... I've been pulled over five times in a single day. That was the extreme on one side. I've gone six months without being pulled over at all. Extreme on the other. It varies. 
right? And yesterday I got pulled over once, but I drove for nearly eight hours during the day. And if you're driving around a city, you expect not to be stopped very often. If you're driving out in the country, you expect to be stopped very often. If you're in rural areas that are not touristy, you expect to be pulled over not very often. And if you're in touristy areas, you expect to be pulled over constantly all just part of the game and knowing what's going on. And beaches, of course, escalate all of that as well. If you're going to the beach, you'll be pulled over much more often. So that's a thing that you just have to be aware. It's something you have to deal with. If you don't speak the language and you're not prepared to just be natural and have a normal conversation with the police, we've done the videos about what those stops are like, why you shouldn't worry about it and all that. But still, some people get very nervous. I understand. You're used to police stops being a scary thing. You're used to police stops implying something. They don't imply that here. They don't imply it in most countries. But if you can't get past that, if something that's going to bother you or something that you're going to react to, then you shouldn't be driving probably. It's going to make for a very stressful experience for you and it's going to lead to potential issues. So just things to be aware of. And of course, there can be issues with stops. And, uh, you know, in those cases, having someone who is a native driver, who's able to talk to the police, who has resources, who's handling those things for you can be a really big benefit. So that's something you may want to consider as well. Not that you wouldn't be comfortable with the police stop, not that you don't appreciate them, but you just may not be able to communicate well. I've had stops where they were trying to tell me a taillight was out and I didn't quite understand what was going on. Not a big deal, but there can be a s simple situation. Oh, a light is out that I didn't know about. They want to tell me about it and I'm not understanding that I have a taillight out, right? In that situation, there was no ticket. There was no fine. There was no nothing. He was just explaining that I had a taillight out. You should probably go get this fixed. Oh, cool. Thank you. Is it the left one? Yeah, it's the left one. Okay, have a good night. Right? That was it. Those are things that you just, you have to gauge how you're going to react to it. And then finally, there is the what if something bad happens, right? With all these things, you got you got complicated navigation. You have a little bit more than if you're coming from North America, complicated that or England, more complicated than that driving. You're you've got the potential for police stops and other things you're not used to. Signals are sometimes a little bit different. There's a lot of things going on. There's some traditions with driving you have to get used to. People signal sometimes in ways you don't expect. Take all that together, the chances that you're going to have an accident while life-threatening is probably pretty low. As long as you're wearing a seatbelt, you are pretty safe because everything happens at very low speeds here. So generally, you're going to be fine as far as being injured in the accident. But there's so many people who are out there without protective gear, so many people and animals just in the street. You might end up very easily end up in an accident where you hurt somebody or do damage to their property, in which case you're going to have to deal with the police, with insurance, with all kinds of things. Are those things you want to deal with? If you're living here full time, it may just be prudent to accept that sometimes you have to deal with that. But if you're on vacation, that would be really terrible if that was something you had to deal with while you're on vacation. Anything like that's going to take days. If you're driving and you do get a speeding ticket or something of the sort, they take your license generally for three days. Not a big deal if you live here. But if you don't live here, it could be a really big Big problem. Suddenly they have your license, you have to wait, you have to go to Managua, you have to deal with this big thing. For those of us who live here, yeah, still annoying, but not a big deal at all. It doesn't really impact us in any serious way. But if you're on a vacation or you're just not comfortable dealing with stuff like that, if you don't have a lawyer, suddenly these things snowball and it's like, ooh, even a really little fender bender that's no big deal or a speeding ticket could be something big. But if you actually have an accident where someone gets hurt, obviously it's going to escalate. Suddenly you can't leave the country. They're going to pull your passport. If they deem you as a flight risk, there's the possibility, and we're going to talk about this, of being uh, detained in a holding cell until such times are able to uh, deal with you through the court system. That is not something you want to go through. Now, I want to talk about this. Is it, because you'll hear this from a lot of sources, can you be arrested and put into a holding cell by the police, even if you're not at fault, which of course they don't know at the time that the accident happens, if someone is, is hurt, injured, and especially if they're killed while they're driving, if you're involved in an accident that causes serious human harm, bodily harm, can you be put into a holding cell while they determine what happened? Yes, that is absolutely the case. That is something that can happen. However, while that is true, that is because, especially if you're a foreigner, you are a flight risk. If you have truly done something terrible or you're facing some really harsh penalties, it is expected that you may make an attempt at crossing a border. Why wouldn't you? If it's not a country you plan on living in, if it's not a place that you're tied to in any way, why face the criminal system when you can just get away? The United States does not extradite to Nicaragua, to the best of my knowledge. They are not friendly countries. Canada is not particularly friendly with Nicaragua. You would expect that if you were able to make it home to one of the major tourist countries where people are coming to Nicaragua from, that you would feel safe and be confident that you would not face trial in Nicaragua, even if you had committed a crime. 
as long as you're able to get over the border and get away. And so that is something they have to worry about. They have real risks with this. And so if they deem you as a flight risk and you have a serious crime, there is the potential of you being held while it is investigated. That's important to understand why it might happen, that it could happen. But it's also important to note that in years of living here, I have never heard a credible story of it happening. The closest thing I've ever heard is a third party where someone I've never met in person makes the claim that someone they once met in person made the claim that it happened to them and in the description was that they had actually hit a child. So whether or not it's an accident, nothing implies that it wasn't their fault and that they weren't going to, if you just hit a kid and it's not the kid's fault, there's a very real possibility you're going to go to jail anywhere, right? That is a common thing, right? If you are driving somewhat recklessly, if you are impaired, if you are old and got behind the wheel and, and it turned out you were in, impaired from your age, if you were tired, all those things are illegal, right? If you're in the United States and you were elderly and you drove and you accidentally hit someone and they could show that you knew you were elderly at any point and that you may be impaired and not driving up to snuff while it is rare, to prosecute on that, they absolutely can. That is totally legal. That is, you know, you could be sued by that family for wrongful death, for wrongful injury, whatever. And if they can show, then it becomes reckless endangerment and a bunch of other felony activities. You could easily go to jail for that. And the United States is really big on sending people to jail. They're often looking for those opportunities. So if you're white, yeah, not too likely in the U.S. But if you're not white, it's a very real risk. Here in Nicaragua, it's about the same. Right, so we've heard stories of basically Nicaragua acting like any other country. If you have a major accident, you hurt someone, you could end up in jail. Well, that's just reality. Right now, I don't know how many times this has happened. What I do know is that in years of living here, I have never had anyone that I know know of anyone that's had this happen. Right, I do know someone who had a DUI and, and killed someone. They went to jail, obviously. That's different. We're talking accidents. We're talking bodily injury we're talking being held during the during the determining who's at fault stage this could happen it really can but i have no credible rumor of it ever have happening the only stories i've ever heard are from anonymous people who are supposedly in the san juan del sur enclave area where the risks of flight would be many times higher where the police are typically much harsher with foreigners because they have a lot of behavioral issues with the enclave down there. And still it's only rumors. And even the rumors we've heard don't make it clear that they shouldn't have been in jail, right? So if you're not at fault, we don't even have a rumor from an anonymous source to suggest that it might actually be a real world problem. So that's how little of an actual problem it is. But this highlights, so that's your driving stuff. That's why you may or may not want to drive and make your own decisions, right? Can you? Yes. Can you buy a car here? Yes. Even if you're not uh, a, a resident? Yes, there are ways to buy a car, contrary to what people from outside the country try to tell you uh, to, to make it seem harder to live here than it actually is. Uh, can you rent a car and drive? Yes, you can. Can you drive on a license from anywhere in North America? Yes, you can. All those things are fine. We all do it all the time. Not a big deal, but you get this fear and uncertainty and doubt stories, and we want to talk about that because if you're hearing stuff from people, especially down in San Juan del Sur and its area, right? This is an enclave area. It is loaded with gringos. It is tons and tons of people living under very different non-integration cultural activities, right? People there don't really know Nicaragua under most circumstances. Once in a while, you'll meet someone who's actually aware of the country, but most of the time, that is not what you're getting. Most of the time, you're getting people who are talking to other gringos all the time. They're getting stories from people. Like We talk about this all the time, right? There's full of scams. Every time I talk to someone who went down to San Juan del Sur, what does the story end with? Oh, either someone tried to scam me or I did get scammed, right? It seems like every time, every story we hear out of there is different than the rest of the country. We know all kinds of people who live up here all the time. And as soon as you talk to someone from San Juan del Sur, they have all these woe is me stories, all this, oh, it happened to someone I know stories. But can you, anyone ever verify them? Almost never. Certainly 
More bad things happen in San Juan del Sur because you have more people who aren't paying attention. More, like the nature of being in that area suggests a much higher likelihood that people went down there without doing their research, that they're looking to be around gringos, they're trying to escape from being in Nicaragua. All those things contribute to more likely to have problems than other areas. So you put all those people together, you self-selecting into people who are likely to run into problems are likely to be in the same spot. And that spot is San Juan del Sur and its immediate surrounding beaches, of course. So you're going to have elevated problems there and because the, everyone knows that the police are going to look at you differently courts are going to look at you differently you're creating your own problems when you live in an enclave like that you got to be more aware and deal with things differently and that's fine right that doesn't mean it's wrong to be down there it doesn't mean it's bad to be down there it just means that it is a different situation but what we always hear from down there is all stories right whether it's an investment scheme or it's real estate or it's things like this we get these stories from down there and everyone has a pattern Right? It's always people who don't want to be identified. Are people ever going to put their names out there, their faces, something that they can, you know, no one's ever going to send in a video where they tell these stories and they're willing to identify themselves. That's the first thing. It's always someone anonymous. Then second thing, it's always I heard from someone. It's the same things we hear about the, uh, the, the, the refuting the vaccine stuff that we talked about, right? No one's willing to be the person who says what someone said and the person that they're quoting, they're never willing to identify either, right? Two steps of anonymity. Same thing with the fear and certainty and doubt that we so commonly get out of San Juan del Sur. Of course, it comes from other places too, but this is where we really get it in a constant stream. We hear about it all the time, right? You get this, there's a culture, and I hate to say it, but this is real. There's a culture of dishonesty in San Juan del Sur. And there's something about that area that draws a certain group of people. Of course, there's lots of wonderful people in San Juan del Sur too, both Nicaraguans and gringos and, and expats, right? There's lots of great people who just love the bay, who just love the mountains, who just love the architecture. It, it's different. Some of it is history. There's some people who are there just because it's part of the gold rush. Right? I love San Juan del Sur. I was there in 2019. It's what brought me back to Nicaragua. It's what reset my vision of what Nicaragua could be for me. And luckily that reset led me to investigate and figure out what would be right for me, which was definitely not San Juan del Sur. But San Juan del Sur was an important part of my decision to come back to Nicaragua. So it's very important to me for those reasons. And I've had wonderful times down there. And there's a lot of great things that are unique down there. But it has its problems. And one of its problems one of its primary problems is the culture of the gringos there, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get gringos who love to tell these stories. Now, Nicaragua is famous for its chisme, for its, its gossip, right? San Juan del Sur has the same thing, but it's the gringo gossip. It's the st horror stories from people who, if you follow up, no one really knows who it was. No one ever follows up to say, wait, wait, wait. Was, so what is the story behind this? Someone will say, well, I got, I got you know, scammed. Okay, did, were you going out looking to get scammed? How did this happen? Who did it? Uh, what, what led you to, to fall for this, right? And you start digging in and you suddenly you get these really good answers, but no one ever does that, right? So in this case, oh, some, some old guy hit a kid. Oh, and he, and he spent some time in jail for that? Well, that seems expected. Where is the part of this story where something bad happened, right? Did, was it an accident? Did the kid step into his car? No one said that. We're just supposed to assume that this guy was, just because he was a nice guy, I'm sure he is. But if he even exists, did he actually you know, drive with awareness? Was he actually doing what he's supposed to do? Did, was it truly an accident he couldn't have avoided? Or was he not alert enough? There's a lot of important questions that you have to ask. This is important. This story, right, we just talked about, it's possible, but we've never heard of it happening, that you could spend some time in a holding cell while they determine if you're guilty in a case where you cause bodily harm. But we've never heard of it happening. It's a maybe. It was repeated in the comments by San Juan del Sur as you will. That's a very big gap from we heard rumors that are unverified that it's plausible go to prison holding cells at a police station are not prison being incarcerated is a very different thing so we lead off with completely false information and then the story to base it on is one time i met a guy not a guy you know not a guy you can verify just some guy who made a claim we have no reason why we'd believe him right he's talking to him in a spot where we constantly get false stories, you know, and, and making claims about himself. Oh, I, I didn't, we don't know. He didn't even repeat that he didn't hit the kid. He didn't even repeat that he wasn't at fault. He didn't repeat anything that would make any of this make sense. There are very good reasons why you may not want to drive because there are risks. 
And there's several different ones. And some of them are just that it's too costly or too annoying. Is there this risk that you could have something bad happen? Yes, and we've talked about it on the show a number of times. If anything, I think that even we overblow it because we've never heard of this actually happening in real life. So that's important when you're looking at Nicaragua from a general standpoint or you're looking at it from just this driving perspective, be realistic. Yes, if you are on vacation, if there's no way that your life wouldn't be destroyed, if you having an accident while driving and having to spend a few days in a holding cell while they determined if you were at fault, would, if that would ruin your life, then why would you rent a car anywhere? And if it won't ruin your life and it's not a big deal, then just gauge if renting a car makes sense for you. All these things, right? Think critically. Do these stories make sense? Do they add up? Is there someone with an actual basis behind them? Or is it just stories that people like to tell because they have something to sell you? Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to join the, ch if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'd love if you joined the channel, but I don't know what that means. I don't have any join button. If someone knows what that would do, hey, let's come up with that. That sounds like a cool thing. I don't know what that would be. Ask your questions, scroll down below, use a video. We'd love to put you into the show. So take video of yourself and send that in to me. Someone did ask about that recently, but we haven't gotten that video yet. Can't wait to get that. I love having you guys on the show. As always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you'd be so kind, click on one of these videos that pops up or scroll down, click on the ones that YouTube recommends. That helps promote the show.